pen, get a pad of paper, and sit down and get ready to have a Bible study with me, Evangelist Len Paxton. I love you, and I look forward to you in the Bible study. Praise the Lord and welcome to the Len Paxton teaching series this evening. As always, it's a joy and a delight to come into your hearts and lives and homes with the Word of God. And tonight's subject is a subject that uh, is really making a resurgence these days in the world. We're going to talk to you about the mystery of reincarnation. And this is a popular Eastern mystic belief that has literally damned millions of souls to an eternal fiery devil's hell by robbing them of their faith in Jesus Christ. You cannot be, and I'll say this at the beginning tonight, you cannot be a Christian and believe in reincarnation at the same time because the two beliefs are contrary one to the other. What the Bible teaches about life after death and what a person who believes in reincarnation teaches about life after death are two entirely different things. And so tonight, if you have your Bibles, let's look first of all at the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 27. The Bible says this, It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. And this study is so very important tonight because it decides human destiny. A believer in reincarnation will fit his entire life to this doctrine. What is reincarnation? Reincarnation is the philosophy of successive rebirth on this planet. In other words, they teach that you live a life you're born into this planet, you live a life, you die, and then you're born all over again, you come back as somebody or even something else in your next life. Of course, that's foolishness, and the Word of God uh, reveals its foolishness to us. Reincarnation teaches that the wheel of eternity, it reoccurs between birth and death over and over again. Reincarnation teaches us that human lives are without beginning and ending. And we know that's contrary to the Word of God. Reincarnation teaches that human souls on planet Earth successfully return to form new bodies or new life forms of some sort. I think, myself, I think that believers in reincarnation have been watching too much science fiction on television. Amen? Uh, they say that people can come back as an animal, an insect, a bird, or another human person. Karma is the force which makes each rebirth depend upon previous deeds in other lives. Now, it, now just as we get to that point in our study, I'll ask you, if you know your Bible, if you know your Bible, is there anything even remotely like that taught us in the Word of God? And of course the answer would be no. Reincarnation is outside of biblical truth. And we need to establish that fact as we endeavor to understand what it is. And in this New Age Mecca, we really want to be able to know how to relate to those with whom we come in contact who believe this. Because people who believe in reincarnation are not necessarily bad people. They need Jesus. And that's why that we're doing a program like this. Because maybe some of you are believing in this. Well listen, I want to challenge you to find out what does the Bible say about life after death. What does the Bible say about salvation? What does the Word of God say? This book that I hold in my hand, the Bible, is the absolute 100% bona fide truth of all the ages given to us by a thrice holy God who loves you enough to write it for you and to send it into the earth realm through holy prophets of old given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So what it says pertaining to these issues is absolute 100% truth. I challenge those of you who are watching me right now, 
And maybe you're involved in New Age philosophy. Maybe you're involved in reincarnation. Why don't you search the scripture and get an alternative point of view? And I believe that as you do, if you're honestly doing it, I believe that the Holy Spirit will reveal to your heart the truth about eternity. Amen? The truth about your need and my need for Jesus Christ. Amen? And that's what uh, the purpose in my heart for giving these lessons are. Where did the doctrine of reincarnation originate? Now there's a question. Well, it originated with the devil. His demons, who were originally angels in heaven, uh, are ageless, they are sexless, and they are deathless. In one generation, a certain demon spirit might possess a Babylonian, and in another generation, that same spirit could possess a Sodomite in Sodom, or an Egyptian in Egypt, or a, a Ninevite in Nineveh. These demon forces are transgenerational. They do not die. When these spirits speak through a possessed person, they tell of their recurring possessions of other humans. Okay? A person who's listening to these demons could think it's the man or woman uh, the, themselves, not knowing that it's an evil spirit doing the talking. In other words, a, a person will say, I was Alexander from 1704 on the Barbary Coast, and I did this, and I did that in my former life. No, it's a demon spirit that's involved with that person. And it makes these... See, demons are heavily involved in deception. So it deceives these people into believing that they were those other people, and that they were alive uh, back at that time. And this is how the deception begins. Uh, a spirit, for example, could say, you know, I lived in a French doctor in the 17th century whose name was Jacques. I committed a murder and was never found out, and I feel condemned. And uh, so the person in this generation that we live in today who is possessed by that spirit could say, ah, that's when I lived before. In other words, they'll say, well, I was Jacques. No. You just are having that same demon operate against your life that operated against Jah. Okay? That person has not lived before. Rather, a deceiving spirit in him which possessed this other entity entirely in a former time is now speaking out. Okay? In several countries of the world, there are demon-possessed people who say that they are the re-embodiment of those who have lived in other generations. Therefore, it is clear that the doctrine of reincarnation began with the devil. Its field of operation is mostly in pagan people who are ignorant of his devices. But I would quickly add to that that today it's fastly becoming a popular thing in the United States of America, the so-called most enlightened nation on the face of the earth. And many would ask, well, Brother Paxton, how could that be and why is that? Let me tell you why I believe that reincarnation, among many other foolish doctrines, is making a resurgence in this nation. One of the biggest reasons I believe it is is because this nation of the United States of America has had more light than almost any nation on the face of the earth. More gospel preached, more Holy Spirit moving, more teaching of the Word of God, more access to truth than almost any nation on the face of the earth. And when you sin against light, now hear me, beloved, when, when a nation... When an individual, when a people's sin against light, it's a grievous sin indeed. And God holds that nation accountable, but even more than that, when you turn off light, darkness envelopes, envelopes you. Let me say that again. When a nation turns out the light of God's Holy Spirit, darkness will surround them and overtake them. 
And that's the reason these darkened, ignorant, uninformed doctrines are making a resurgence in this land is because America has tried to shut off the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, right on the other hand, light will always dispel darkness. Light will break up the darkness. Light will drive darkness out. That's the intent and design of light. If you come into your home after being out for the evening, and you come in and it's pitch black, when you turn that light switch on, what happened? Light fills the room. It floods the room, driving back the darkness. Well, that's what this principle is here. A reincarnation is having a resurgence in the United States of America because we have turned a deaf ear to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have tried to dim its light, to dim its influence on this nation, and we are literally being overrun by pagan practices and witchcraft. Now, I'm just going to be blunt. That's exactly what it is. Uh, what is meant by the term transmigration of souls? Transmigration is another word for reincarnation. It means the movement of life from one time period uh, and life species to another. Uh, for example, in India, the word avatar means the incarnation of any god into a living human person. In its highest religious evaluation, Avatar is the incarnation of Vishnu, a prominent Hindi god. Some teachers of Hinduism believe that Vishnu has been reincarnated numerous times. Others teach, uh, other Hindus teach, that Vishnu has come as Avatar nine times as a fish. As, this is this is kind of comical, but I'm going to as a fish, as a tortoise, as a man lion, a boar, a child dwarf, Rama, Krishna, Buddha, and Christ. See now they're even pulling Christ uh, into their sinful doctrines. One can easily determine that this is a form of demon possession and that they are lying demon spirits and not a person living from other generations. Okay, let's be clear, <coughs> excuse me, as we get to this point in our, our study. These are not people from other generations. These are not the spirits of departed friends and loved ones. They do not come back. It's appointed unto men once to die, the Bible says, and after this, the judgment. And let me say, the belief of reincarnation is a bald-faced fabrication and has no relationship whatsoever to truth. I want you to understand that. It has no relationship to reality to it. Praise God. And what, what we need today is reality in what we believe. And we need to return to biblical truth, beloved, as we face the challenges of our generation. Amen. Now, according to the National Enquirer, the soul in eternity who wins the assignment of a certain person hovers near the parents for some time to make sure that he is willing to enter into that physical body. When the time is right, the physical blossoming occurs. He enters the newborn body, usually at the time of ejection, but occasionally shortly before or shortly after. If he hesitates too long, they teach, the baby will not live. In the case of a stillborn baby, the body was not perfected and a soul does not enter it. He will then have to start seeking again for a proper vehicle or wait his turn for those particular parents to come along if he was intent on living with them. Surprisingly, there are almost as many candidates for deformed bodies of newborn babies as for the healthy normal ones. This is an important lesson that we learn here. The greater the obstacle in the physical body, the more opportunity for a soul to pay off some past debts and achieve more rapid spiritual growth. Wow! Could you imagine, beloved, basing your whole life belief 
and your eternal belief on this foolishness. Again, I want to challenge you. And I don't speak these words unkindly. I don't speak these words harshly. But I am a defender of truth. Unashamedly so. And I want to challenge you and encourage you today. Maybe you're listening at me right now and you believe in reincarnation. Or you believe in New Age philosophy. And you don't believe in the Word of God. You don't believe the Bible. But I want to challenge you to honestly, today, get a Bible. Find out what God has to say about eternal values and perspectives. And if you'll honestly search, truthfully search, diligently search for the evidence, the evidence. Find some evidence for the New Age philosophy of reincarnation. It's not there. You can look and look and look. It's not there. But this, the Word of God, is replete. Our world today, the world of science, the world of archaeology, our world today is replete with evidence that the Bible is true, praise God. If you will honestly look into the Scriptures, I believe the Holy Spirit will reveal truth to you. And you will find that truth in the person of Christ and Him crucified in this hour. And if you today will give your heart to Him, now I can tell you about your eternity. Praise God. If you'll give your heart to Christ, if you'll give your heart to Jesus, you see, you as an individual matter. You're not going to come back as John or Sue or Bill. You matter. To Jesus Christ, you matter. You're going to spend eternity with Him. If you belong to Him. If you belong to Satan, you're going to spend eternity with Him. And that's why He introduces these, these false doctrines. This one that we're talking about is reincarnation. There's a plethora of others. And He introduces them to steal your soul away from the God who loves you. But see, you're not going to come back as, as Jack or Bill or Sue or, or Elizabeth. You matter. You matter. And for those who come to Christ, He keeps it. He takes you to be with Him. He said, let not your heart be troubled. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. You're not going to be just reborn over and over and over again into this planet as somebody new next time. You matter to God more than that. Think about it. Think about it. Read the Word of God about it. And God will enlighten your heart to the truth. And come to Christ. And give your heart to Him. And come out of this false teaching of reincarnation. Now who were the first human beings to believe in reincarnation? Uh, the, do the doctrine of uh, metempsychosis means to put a soul into life. The supposed passing of the soul at death into another body, either human or animal, by transmigration. The belief in transmigration of human souls began in pagan lands, where they submitted to demon power and refused, refused, now listen to that, refused to follow God. It goes back to what I said to you a few moments ago. If, if light is given you, and any day of the world, in America especially, you can turn on television, turn on radio, get a CD, get a DVD, pop it in your player. You can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, the eternal truth of the Word of God. It's available to you. And as you begin to hear this and see this truth from the Word of God, if you reject it, if you refuse to follow the God of the Bible, you will search for a God better to your liking. That's America's problem. They have often refused to follow the God of the Bible as He has revealed Himself to be in the pages of this book, and they have searched 
for a God that's better to their liking, only to be deceived by Satan and to follow after demon spirits. Now let me be honest about it with you. You'll lose your soul if you do that. You will lose your soul if you do that. Don't refuse to follow God. Become an obedient heart before God. Bow the knee in humility before God before it's everlastingly too late. And give your heart to Christ today. Amen. Now let's look at what God says to us in the book of Romans. Uh, and we'll start uh, Romans chapter 1 verses 18 through 20, verse 23 and verse 25. And the Bible says this, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. For the, verse 20, For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. If man wants to, Man can clearly know that there is a God and that Jesus Christ, hallelujah, and Him crucified, glory to God, is the Savior of the world. It can be clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as we close this program down for today, we're going to have to come back next week and pick up with part two of our study on reincarnation. But let me say this to you, and let me encourage you today to come to Christ. Man is a sinner in need of a Savior, and God has so graciously provided a Savior for us. His name is Jesus Christ. I want to pray with you right now before we go off the air tonight. I want to pray with you. The words to this prayer won't save you, but if you believe them with all of your heart, you can and will be saved. Amen? So let's pray together. If you will accept Christ, He will clearly reveal to you the truth about eternity. Eternity is an important subject. There's no question about it. And we believe that God doesn't want us to be in the dark. He wants us to come to the light. And we just read in the Scripture, the book of Romans, which we're going to pick up there next week, where he says that we can clearly see these things if we'll put our faith and our trust in Him and not in some foolishness like reincarnation or any other crazy doctrine that's going on out there today. Amen? So let's pray. And if you can repeat these words with me right out loud wherever you might be. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. I am a sinner, Lord, and I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me for my sins, and please forgive me today for my rebellion. Lord, I'm sorry that I've rebelled against you. I want your way. I want the way of truth. I want the way of Scripture. Lord, right now I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart to wash me from my sins, to cleanse my heart, to change my heart today. I repent of my sins and I turn to Christ. I will serve you to the best of my ability and when I lack ability, the Holy Spirit will give me ability. And Lord, right now I believe in my heart that you have raised Jesus from the dead and he is alive today. And I confess with my mouth Jesus is my Lord, and according to your word, right now, I am saved. Praise God. If you just prayed that prayer and received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, write to us today, please. You can write to Len and Angie Paxton, Acts 2618 Ministries, Post Office Box 5714, in Traverse City, Michigan, 49. 696. And we'd be so happy to get your letters, rejoice with you about the fact that, man, you just gave your heart to Jesus Christ. You just got in the big legs.
praise God. And now you're going to be a seeker after truth and turn your back on these fairy tales and fables of reincarnation and all these other New Age doctrines that are out there today. Praise God. We have the truth right here. The Holy Word of Almighty God. Amen. So join us next week as we pick back up with another part to this message entitled The Mystery of Reincarnation. What is it and why it is not the truth. So until next week, this is Evangelist Len Paxton saying, Go with God and He will go with you. Bless you now is my prayer. Thank you for being with us tonight for the Len Paxton Teaching Series. As always, it's a privilege and a joy to come into your hearts, lives, and homes with the Word of God. We want you to tune in again next week as once again we'll study a great Bible subject and we want you to be a part of our study, please. And don't forget to write to us this week with your prayer request. Ask us for those CDs when we offer them. Man, we love to sow that into your life so that you and I together can dig into the great truths of the Word of God. You can write to us, Len and Angie Paxton, Acts 2618 Ministries, Post Office Box 5714, that's 5714, Traverse City, Michigan, 49696. That zip code again is 49696. I'll be looking for your card or your letter. God bless you.